Stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watch, were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rang them, the bombs bursting in. The following broadcast is an official production of the Faulkner Sports Network. All right, so you see, usually, nice right the stage out. spike. Oh my gosh, such low damage. Never bad at the nice uh, jab there. So now Pikachu really having his more of his way with Jigglypuff here. A very nearly a knockout. Oh, there it is. Drag down Folks. into critical with Thunder. Yeah. Right, so. Nice. With the down spike. Yeah. Be oh, oh gets up with the Thundog at night. Nice. Oh, not yet, not yet, not yet. Oh, come on. Oh, well, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Man, neutral with <laughs> two kills on that one. They're both literally at 150. Nice! Yeah, Great job. Oh, oh nice. good reflect. Good. Nice. Nice. Good read there. Here we're back after our earlier game tonight against uh, in Smash Bros against the uh, who is it Asheville North Carolina Asheville. Uh, we've got Florida Atlantic tonight, so this is going to be the premier team, the Smash Blue team, and they're going to be facing the Owls this evening. I'm head coach Caleb Colquitt. And I'm Titus King. And we're going to be here bringing you all of that information and gameplay with all the coverage and commentary. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, add a little flavor to the game this evening. So let's go ahead and meet our players. Playing Samus, the captain, Scourge, Seth. Dawson. Snake. Snake. Played by Calzone. Rape. Thrash. Flying high is Pit. D-Man. Darian Rogan. Playing Zero Suit Samus. Cam. Cameron White. All right, and as you can see there, we're inside the Skyloft, powered by Regitar USA High Res Arena. And nobody really at the couches yet. They're all kind of in the warm-up area, uh, strategizing, trying to figure out what order they're going to go in, that sort of thing. Uh, and you can see the guys there. And also Cam, uh, you, Cam, Darian, Rafe, and, and Scourge, but also uh, Connor's still there kind of helping out, help keep people warm if they need a warm-up round, that kind of thing. So uh, they got all the team there and not sure exactly what they're going to be going with first here tonight, but we're looking forward to see what strategy they wind up coming up with. So, Titus, you've been paying very close attention to the blue team practice and been watching a lot of these guys practice. What are you expecting this evening? 
Uh, so I know Rafe has actually been picking up a couple of other characters instead of his just King K roles. So he's also he's picked up. He tried picking up Snake. I'm not sure if he's still dealing with Snake, but I know he's mainly been working with uh, Pac-Man. Yeah, I've seen that too, and I've thought about re-recording that intro specifically because of that, because he said that he's he's gotten some bad habits with Snake that are just hard for him to overcome, so he's decided to try to pick up Pac-Man, so that might be interesting. Uh, Seth also played in an official match as Bowser, which we've never seen him play any official match as anything other than Samus yeah. for a long time. And that surprised me a little bit because I know that he's played Bowser before, but I was used to his sub being Pichu, mm -hmm. uh, which we actually saw in our last match earlier yeah. tonight. But yeah, so the guys have definitely been playing around. Um, and then we had Cam pull out Roy last game randomly. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. That was very strange. I did not see that coming at all. But I do like Roy. I'm not I'm not against seeing some As Roy. As someone play. who used to play right. Roy myself. Right, and I, I play Roy too. And so you're you're not gonna get a whole lot of complaints from the two of us watching some Roy Smash play. But if they were going to send somebody in first, uh you know, I think either Darian or Cam would probably be their first pick, but Seth may opt to go in first like he did in the last game as well. So it'll be interesting to see where they go. I think that Rafe is more comfortable in that third or fourth person slot. Yeah. And because of that, he tends to not want to go early. Uh, but we could definitely see, at least there's a, a possibility that uh, Scourge would actually opt to go first because he yeah. likes either the first or the second slot. And so Rafe being one of our better players is good to have as an anchor. Yep. Um, it looks like we're actually on a bathroom delay, according to the other team. So we're just waiting on them. They say it's going to be about two minutes. But, you know, in the meantime, we've still got some time to talk about this team. And one thing that I did want to mention as well is that just based on the standings right now, we do have enough wins that if we are able to either win tonight or win one of the two games or sorry, or win the game that we have remaining, that there's at least a chance we can see a playoff. Now, one of our wins is a forfeit win, so that makes that slightly less likely. Yeah. Because forfeit wins don't count for as much as just winning outright if there's a tiebreaker. Uh, but if we were able to win tonight and win tomorrow, it would be almost assured that we would be able to get into it because I believe uh, FAU is ranked about middle of the pack in our standings. Why don't I go ahead and look that up right now? Uh Yeah, so FAU is actually ranked number three right now. So they are one of the tougher teams in our conference. But if we could pull off a win tonight, that would really bolster yeah. our rank. So if we could somehow manage to pull that off, and then Malone, who was our remaining opponent, is ranked a little bit lower. That is a very winnable match. Uh, we're right now just tied with South Florida, which kind of understandable because we actually came very close to winning that game. So... Uh, we've we've beaten Miami Dade, who's in ninth place, but because they're so low ranked, that doesn't help us yeah. much. But if we're able to beat, uh, if we're able to win the game tonight and be able to beat Malone, we're pretty much a shoe in for a uh, final, or, or sorry, a post season appearance. Because if we do that, then we'll have beaten out FS uh, uh, USF University of South Florida uh, because we have tied records right now. Now they did beat us. Which means that they do have the, uh, they have the head-to-head. -head. So I guess theoretically, if they were able to win their two remaining matches and we won our remaining two matches, they would actually win. But that's unlikely considering who they're playing next. So all of that to say, even if we win the next two matches, it's not a guarantee. But it's there's a very high likelihood we would actually get to make it to the playoffs if we're able to win these two games. Yeah, even though it's never good to wish ill on other teams, I kind of wish they would lose. Yeah, I mean. Don't get me wrong. Guys at, guys at South Florida, super nice. We had a really good game against them. We enjoyed it. Also, kind of hope they lose just because it benefits us. But anyway, okay, so it looks like we've got a lag test going on here, so they should be finished up in just a second. Oh, no, this is an actual match. Okay, no lag test. All right. Uh, well, all right, then. Here we go. Getting things started out. I think this is a lag test because... Yeah, definitely a lag test. But that's okay. 
I think this indicates that they're going to go with D-Man first, though, since he's the one playing right now. And against a Byleth, that's not a terrible matchup. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Darian will have practice against... Has had practice against a Byleth because Connor has... Mm -hmm. That is a sub. Right. So we will get to see... Now, Byleth, of course, very powerful and has a decent amount of range. But even though Pitt doesn't have quite as much range in close, like Byleth's more of a mid-range character, whereas Pitt does have swords, but he's... He, he's his on swords the, aren't as long. Right, he's on the lower end of the sword range character, so his his range is significantly shorter than, for example, Marth or Pitt. And that's the, the same is true for Byleth. However, um, as far as range goes, his range is significantly more versatile. It uh, doesn't have to charge nearly as much. And so he probably wins the range game, and as long as he's able to get good approaches in, he should be fine. All right, so here we go. Oh, and Faulkner draws first blood, but FAU answers very quickly. So this is interesting. We're we're seeing like ambush Byleth, which you don't see all that often. Yeah. Now kind of getting into more of a rhythm. <laughs> Two characters that love to nair. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so. Darian attempts to grab there, but he's just barely out of range. Doing a really good job of playing the ledge game. He's at a damage disadvantage now. But Darian's gotten really good at ledge guarding. And he's he's learned to go off stage a lot more. Right. Which, as pit, is essential. Nice little pit back air there. That back air is evil. Oh, it is. I love it. Yeah, just a misread there. Unfortunately, the Bile is getting the better of him in the air there. Oh, another one. Another back air catches that Bile completely off guard. Ooh. Oh. And her own back air. Yeah, counters with a back air of her own. And hers does hit harder and reach a lot further. It's just harder to pull off. Yeah, unfortunately, still had a even jump. even with a really good ledge guarder like Darian, it's hard to ledge guard Byleth effectively because she has that super long tether grab as her recovery. Doesn't she have, like, one of the longest... She has the longest, yeah. That's what I thought. <clears throat> Only Joker's is even close. Because, like, as a Link player, I can tell you, ours is not very long. There you go. Just cake on the damage. Oh, there and go. there's the forward smash for the win. Darian brings it back down to a tie. Darian at very scary damage against a Byleth who can kill pretty easily. But. Yep. yep. And there is and the save. Yeah, there's the, uh, there's the star KO where Pitt reveals he cannot read. Sadly That's just a it. Fire Emblem character thing. They all hit hard. Well, uh, well, most of them. I was about to say, Lucina doesn't hit very hard. Marth can, but only with his tip. He has the he has the Martharitis. The shield. A lot of air. it's just shield and neutral air. Like that's all that has been for the past several seconds. And you remember, that's how he lost his last stock, is playing the Shield Neutral Air game, so. It's funny how, despite the fact these are two very different characters, you're actually seeing 
the same bizarrely gameplay. similar game styles, yeah. Oh, drops a shield just a bit early. And this that oh. yeah, that's Pitt's real Wait, he's alive! He lives! The boy who lived. Commentator's curse, Titus. Commentator's curse. <laughs> no, it is a thing. It is. It's it's real. The commentator's curse exists. Well, Darian played a really good game there. And uh, he did really well, but the problem is he was playing someone with a very similar play style. Yeah. And what wound up happening is it was almost 50-50 for a lot of that neutral air, uh, neutral air shield, neutral air sheer, uh, shield game. But the difference is they wound up winning it about the same amount of times. But when Byleth wins it, it does a lot more damage and hits a lot harder. Yep. And so that was the problem with that one. He actually wound up going pretty even with the Byleth on that. But unfortunately, Byleth can take way more advantage of those wins than Pitt can. So that's where you're going to wind up in that matchup, unfortunately. So that's where we are. But got to tell you, I'm looking forward to seeing this next one. It looks like they're going to be sending in Scourge. So the captain is stepping into the second slot here. And this is a very favorable matchup for two reasons. First of all, Samus just naturally wins the Byleth matchup. Like that's just textbook. But on top of that, I happen to know for a fact that Seth actually mained Byleth for a little while, and one of his best friends who he's played Smash with a lot mained Byleth for a while. Huh, I did not know that. So, so he he knows this matchup extremely well. I expect him to do very well against this Byleth, and that's probably why he decided to go in right now, is because he knows he's going to be playing a Byleth. As far as stage selection, I don't know what really gives him much of an advantage. I know that Seth likes platforms, but I feel like, especially with Byleth's... Yes, like yeah, with Byleth's combos, I don't feel like... Um, Battlefield is smart, so I, I, I would, I would think he would avoid Final Destination or Battlefield. Those would be the two that I would assume that he would avoid. See, Final Destination is just the best stage. Oh, I agree. You know, you and I see eye to eye on that. But here's the thing: in that matchup, I understand why Seth wouldn't want that because Byleth has the very scary Phil knot, and on a flat stage, there is nowhere to hide from that. Yep. Well, it's like, well, they banned Final Destination. Interesting. Well, all right then. So they've banned FD, uh, which is not what I was expecting, but perfectly okay. Uh, they've also banned Town, which should always be banned every single time. And Pokemon Stadium too. so Seth opts for Halabastion. Platforms. I know. Stand them. I know. I'm with you, but... That's how it goes. Yeah, so Halabastion, really good for him. He's able to escape Byleth's onslaught pretty much anywhere on stage he is. Just a short hop up to the platform is going to be super easy for Samus to avoid a lot of that. Um, and while Seth does have projectiles himself... Oh, wow, 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 wow. All right, there we go. And they taunt, and we are underway. There we go. The standard Seth special. Grab into forward air. <laughs> Shield game happening. Oh, and a nice charge shot lands. Doesn't launch very much because Byleth is so heavy, but... And there's the out of shield up. <laughs> yep. Pops Always. off some major damage. Wow, Seth's so getting caught by the uh, Fail Knot. Ooh. And that down air hits hard. Boy, it does, doesn't it? So I like the uh, the mix-up there that he has with the bomb, but unfortunately it fails. Here's the thing about the mix-up. It's a good idea, but usually you have to lure them into a false sense of commonality before that works. Oh, and a nice Samus back air. Ooh, just barely missed him. Yeah, they timed that well. And falls into forward air. Seth launches missile. Oh, and able to hit the charge attack from offstage. 
and screw attack. All right, so Byleth well into kill damage there, but accidentally dropped shield a little earlier than he should have. Oh no, this no. is bad. Seth gets a self-destruct there. Nope. Calabastian has a high ceiling, and Byleth is just too heavy for that to work, even at high damage. It doesn't make sense that she's heavy. Well, well, I think the reason they made her heavy is because that was the only way to make that work mechanically inside the game. Because you're right, it doesn't make any sense that she's heavy, and unless, I guess, you're given the rationale she's carrying a bunch of weapons. Yeah. All right. Oh, and the combo bomb charge shot. Nice. And a perfect dodge followed up by a quick forward tilt. Well, Zach, you got this. Yeah. <laughs> Just out of range. And gets him with the Zare. Screw attack out of shield. That missile barely misses. Oh, Ooh. I don't know what Seth was thinking there. Bad move by him. Seth having a little trouble getting back from ledge this time, which normally he doesn't have much trouble doing. Oh, oh if that had sweet spotted, fun, that dude. would have killed. Wow, and Seth losing another stock. He has not played well this stock, unfortunately. Bylas is not beaten Ooh, him like another out. Another SD. Yeah, Bylas has not really beaten him outright, but just has been opportunistic. But that's enough. That Byleth is. I mean, look at this. Surviving. 184. Seth has been able to get plenty of hits off, just has not been able to go in for the kill. There and we there go. it is. Well timed forward smash is able to beat out Byleth. And the captain is able to bring his team back to a 9 7 matchup, but. After losing that second stock, having only one left, uh, that unfortunately puts us at a disadvantage going into this next one. And they're sending in their own pit. Yes. Or dark pit. Dark pit, yep. Which is very close to the same, but he is a little slower and hits a little harder. So. And not as much control over arrows. That's also true. His arrows are much harder to control, but they do more damage, too. Yeah, from a technical Smash player standpoint, your better players tend to play Pit, but I'm better with Dark Pit. Same. Yeah, I just, having the extra damage tends to result in me having better. In fact, I think my highest G GSP on my console at home is actually Dark Pit, if I'm not mistaken, which you would not expect because I don't play Dark Pit all that often. Yeah. But anyway. Online is a completely different game, really. And you can kind of see that in the game that we're watching right now. Because if you were watching last week and watched our scrimmage, it's a very different style of gameplay than yeah. you're going to see when you're playing an opponent online. Because no matter how good your connection is, there's always that little, little bit of lag. And it makes a difference. Yeah. Some characters help get help from that oh for sure yeah some characters actually do better online than they do in person but sadly one of our characters is cam his character does not benefit from that right zero suit that's why he normally doesn't play zero suit online and it looks like they have or we have banned Smashville, Halabastion, and Battlefield. So we'll just be waiting to see who the next one is. All right, who are they going to ban? 
honestly, I can see why they would ban Halabastion since Seth just played on there. Well, looks... Seth's banning those. Oh, that's right, yeah. It looks like they've opted for Small Battlefield, which is one of Seth's better stages. Yep. So... And it's going to be Samus versus Dark Pit, and we're about to get underway right now. One, go. <laughs> uh, it's cheeky, but I'm okay with it. Just getting a little target practice in. All right, and now they've taunted, so the battle can begin in earnest. Oh. Missed, but luckily isn't punished for it. Yeah, pit a much better matchup for Samus because of those Orbitars. Yep. I mean, I know it's technically a dart pit, but both applies. They both have Orbitars. Oh, wow. Nice spot dodge. Yeah, very, very much so. Seth did a good job with the shield game, but Pitt comes right back with the spot dodge. Yes! Played the shield game perfectly. Lots of it in lag on that jab. Ooh. Wow. So Seth doing very well here, but much of the damage that he has has almost all been Orbitar damage. Because he's done really well against this pit, with the exception of launching some projectiles that were easy to deflect. Uh-oh. Yep. Does a screw attack, and there's a lot of in lag when he lands with yep. uh, after screw attack. If and it that doesn't was hit, it is easily punishable. Yep. He, you've got to catch the guy in that combo, or else you're in real trouble there. Uh, so... You know, not the best match uh, that we, we would have hoped for. We would have hoped for the captain to take at least one stock off. But still, a very strong showing. And like I said, Pitt is a hard counter for Samus in a yeah. lot of ways. Especially the fact that Samus, or sorry, Seth specifically playing Samus, does play a lot of aggro Samus, but um, he tries to use a lot of his setups for his aggro by sending in projectiles first, making them dodge, and then catching them when they dodge. Yep. Uh, and when he had the Orbitars, that almost completely negated his range game as a factor. And so because of that, you saw the results that you did. Um, he played really well against, despite kind of having to play from behind, but unfortunately just wasn't enough to even take a stock off of. So here we are back at six and nine, and it looks like Cam is going on. And guess who he's playing? Yeah. Big Daddy DK. So we're going to see some monkey on angel violence here in a second. <laughs> which I'm very much looking forward to. But uh, we'll get to that matchup in a second. DK, a pretty good, yeah, I would say a pretty good counter for Pit. Um, not like a hard counter, not super big advantage, but um, he does have a really good matchup against him because A, he has no projectiles, so yep. Orbitars is completely taken out as a factor. Um, and he has big sweeping attacks that can catch Pit. You don't have to be too precise to get him. And because Pit's very floaty and DK has a pretty good jug, jug, uh, juggle game, especially for Cam, then that's going to be a favorable matchup for him. So we look forward to seeing what he does with it. They have banned Battlefield, Pokemon Stadium 2, and Halabastion. Yeah, them banning really like Battlefield is kind of surprising. I felt I feel like Battlefield would favor Pit much more, or sorry, Dark Pit much more than DK. Yeah, I'm not really sure which stages Cam likes as DK, other than the DK stages. Well, yes, <laughs> but I think that's just for aesthetic appeal. I don't think that's actually yeah. anything to do with competitiveness. Well, we will get here in a second. Looks like they're just setting up the arena, and here we go. Match is starting. All right, and here we go. Three, two, one, go. 
Oh. Yeah, a little confusion. Cam was waiting for a taunt. So he loses about 23 HP just by uh, waiting there and not attacking. But Oh, and a DK grab. Oh, <laughs> punish that side B hard with a whirling Kong. And DK back air. You don't want that monkey foot. Oh. Oh, yeah. Not a good good play. And Cam recovers high there. I don't know that he intended to do that, but. Yeah, and this was the only real uh, danger DK had is that both characters are actually fairly susceptible to juggling. Dark Pit, because he's so... Oh, that's one for the highlight reel, DK. Hey, you like a big monkey foot in your face. Oh, but unfortunately gets stuck on the top of the platform with a lot of shield pressure and then winds up getting killed. <laughs> Gorilla headbutt again. Yeah, unfortunately, Dark Pit was able to shield out of that. Oh, almost wow. Broke yeah, shield. he almost broke shield. That shield was just about gone. Unfortunately, Dark Pit is seemingly starting to pick up on his attack pattern a little bit because he's doing much better than he did earlier in this one. Now, one thing that I hope Cam remembers about Orbitar is that Grav actually does go through them. <laughs> Tech check. That was so nasty, and I love it. I thought he was about to do it again. Nah, he wouldn't have been able to pull it off at this damage. It would have been funny, though. Oh, tries to launch with a DK punch. There we go, a nice spike into a combo through forward air. Oh, but gets caught with the electroshock. Oh, gets caught with the swords. And a neutral air. Nope, he can come back from that. Yeah, it's Dark Pit. You have to... Just barely oh, came man. back, though. It's a shame, because it would have been really nice if Cam were able to hang on to one more stock after that. Now, he tried it again. Winds up just launching Pit. Nope, trying to go for the kill there with the DK headbutt berry. Now he's going to be watching for it. Come on, Cam. Now he's got a fully charged DK punch. Oh. Man, this pit has played an extremely good stock. He's at 155. Been able to avoid DK's big sweeping attacks. Can Cam go ahead and finish the job here? There we go. That's it. Whirling Kong for the win. Eagles are able to hang on to one stock with DK. So that is going to put them in a much better position. Now, granted, they still have a hole to climb out of. It's four to six. So they're going to have to take more stocks than they lose in the next little bit. But if Cam can take two stocks here, tie it up, even if he loses that last stock and we go into the next one, three, four, that'd be huge. Yeah.
I mean, obviously, I'd love for him to just three stock the next guy. That'd be awesome. But, um, you know, if if he can take two stocks here, um, especially considering you took three off of the pit, that'll be a five stock run, and that will be more than you could ask for from anybody. Especially of a DK. Yeah, DK on uh, on online on top of that. Uh, DK actually takes a little bit of a nerfing from being online usually, but anyway. But that pit hated they, getting that spike. Well, it doesn't make a guy feel good getting a stage spike no matter what. It's just not not fun. But when but you're it looks like being able to come back from anything. Right, exactly. And he did come back from it that one time. Yeah. Which, if he hadn't, if he had just not made it back, and he did just barely make it back, uh, then Cam would be going into this next round with a, a set of fre two fresh stocks. Uh, but unfortunately, that's not the case, and he will have to face Zandy playing Yoshi next. So, not a terrible matchup. Yoshi and DK are kind of neutral. Um, Yoshi is definitely faster. Yoshi has a lot of tools at his disposal, but he doesn't do great at the aerial push game. So because of that, I don't think that he he kind of has more of a neutral one. And it looks like they're going to be going on Kalos. I think the reason for that is they're trying to avoid the DK stage spike, which they've very clearly seen yep. Cam is good at. So Kalos makes sense because you can stage spike, but it goes much more horizontal than vertical because there's no angled edge to... Uh, use your, your throw into. So we'll see how that goes. And the match is starting. But that will not stop Cam from spiking you other ways. That's true. <laughs> All right, and we're underway. Both players starting out hot with a couple of neutral and forward airs. Not really able to feel out the opponent much so far. Ah, uh, Yoshi used Tail Whip and it's super effective. <laughs> if Tail Whip was actually that good in Pokemon, people would actually use it. Oh, oh, no. And that's just an SD right there. Man. So that's the second SD we've had in this set. First by the captain, then by Cam. And we're only down by three stocks. If we don't have those two SDs, we're looking at a 5-6 game right now at least. Yep. So really unfortunate. Really hate to see that happen. But that's part of the game too. You just can't have the SDs. So now Faulkner is down to its final man. And that is, of course, going to be Rafe Thrash. El Calzone. And uh, I assume he will be playing Pac-Man, but he plays so many different characters, it's hard to tell. Maybe he go. Here's the thing. Uh, maybe he decides that K. Rule is the best matchup for Yoshi. I don't think that's the case, but he may decide that. Um, let's see. They haven't announced yet. No, they haven't said anything. Um, but yeah, so Cam, or sorry, Cam. Rafe plays so many different characters. We could see... Oh, it's going to be Game & Watch. Didn't see that one coming. No lag. No, none at all. <laughs> none at all. Well, I mean, how can he lag? He's on a liquid crystal display game from 1981. Can't lag that. There's no connection. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so Mr. Game & Watch, very good on aerials. He's... Much better on aerials than Yoshi, even though Yoshi's no slouch on aerial gameplay himself. Uh, he also does really well with sort of the quirky kills, which honestly, when you're behind by three stocks, you could use a few quirky yeah. kills. So this is actually this is actually a pretty good pick for Rafe, I think. Um, if he can take down the Yoshi, but I mean, even if he takes down the Yoshi, we have a mystery fighter after that that we're going to have to face off against. So Rafe definitely has his work cut out for him. Yes, it's three stock twice. Uh, but, you know, if anyone hey, can do it, yeah. it's, it's Rafe. Dude knows what he's doing, knows these matchups, knows these characters. And if he can get off a quick kill against Yoshi and then have to face whoever they counterpick for. Well, I mean, really... Unless they have alts, they can't really counter pick because they're down to the last man. So they just have to face him with. I mean, I guess they could switch characters, but other than that, they can't like substitute in another character or another player. So who we'll see would, how that goes. Who would be a counter pick to Game and Watch? So Game and Watch doesn't do well against characters that have projectiles 
Uh, he does have Bucket, which helps him counter that a good bit. But if you know how to get around Bucket, especially if you have like physical projectiles, that does a lot better around him. Um, he also doesn't do well against sword characters. So like a Roy, a Marth, um, uh, Cloud's really good against him. Cloud's actually a really good counter pick for him. So the only thing you have to worry about with Cloud is if I ever play a game and watch as Cloud, there is no way I'm neutral being. It's just not happening. There's no re because it'll just fill a bucket. So all I need to do is just ignore that completely and and just play an aerial or not. Uh, here's the only problem with Cloud. Cloud is a great matchup against Game and Watch until he gets off stage and then he's dead instantly. Yep. You will get turtled so hard. <laughs> just get a turtle to the face. Or throw some bacon off. It is embarrassing to die to a breakfast meat, but if you had to pick a breakfast meat to die to, it would be bacon. Gosh, I want bacon now. I mean, I had bacon for breakfast, but I'd really like some bacon right now. Gonna get Whataburger after this, Titus? I'm down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just casually making dinner plans during the game. Uh, oh, yes. the up B down air. See, one of the funny things about Game & Watch is because he's so quirky, it's like, oh, and the bicycle kick from Yoshi. Man, that is such a nasty aerial. It does so much damage. So it was not too long ago I found out you can just punch his bomb and it gets destroyed. Oh, it gets no priority. But I will say that's one of the nastiest aerials in the game is up air. It's uh, even worse than Mega Man's in my opinion. It's just so fast. And just negates egg. He's like, I've smashed your egg with a hammer. I can see Rafe smashing an egg with a hammer. Hey, you know what we should call this matchup? Bacon versus eggs. Oh, and Yoshi gets the better of Game & Watch there in that matchup. Didn't expect that. Yoshi has so much priority. He does. And he has actually excellent frame data as well. Oh, and the up smash for the kill, but immediately answered by the Yoshi who just comes down with a little back air and that's all he needed. He may look adorable, but he's a tough customer. Yoshi playing a very patient game here and actually doing a really good job of keeping Game & Watch from being able to get the combos off he wants. Rafe having a hard time anticipating these Yoshi's movement. Oh, but gets him with the up air, tries to combo into bomb, but doesn't quite do it. A little sausage action. Shields through his back air, Ooh. but unfortunately Yoshi gets the better of him right there. He didn't shield quite long enough that time. Oh, up air, or sorry, uh, up B into up air. Always a classic Game & Watch move. Game & Watch really needs to start taking a stock here. Able to use Hammer. One thing we haven't seen at all this match is Judge, and I was wondering if he was going to, like, pop out a side B at some point. He has a lucky nine. Oh, man, I would love to get a nine here. Uh-oh. Nice. <laughs> Good job getting out of that one. Oh, oh. but a little Yoshi up air. And props to that Yoshi player. He was getting handled pretty well in the early part of that match, but made some adjustments and able to take down Rafe, which is no easy feat, regardless of what character he's playing. 
But yeah, props to them. Florida Atlantic plays a solid game and they're able to win that first round. Faulkner does come close, but ultimately not able to finish out the Yoshi. And that leaves us with a score of, uh, sorry, math in my head, uh, 12 to eight. So Florida Atlantic wins that one. And that means that we're going to be left uh, with a score of one nothing overall. So Faulkner needs to win the next two rounds in order to take this, this W. So in the next round, I think it makes the most sense to actually keep the order that they had. Mm -hmm. I thought Darian did a really good job coming out in front however they might be expecting that so in this situation what do you do titus do you do you go with what was already seeming to be a good pick to start out with or do you change the order up like maybe send in seth first or something like that mm -hmm. or cam yeah i'd probably switch it up hold darian back just put in either seth or cam Pitt does do better when he has the opportunity to counter pick so that may be a smart move um I think Seth may be the better option because if Seth can just do some damage and take four or even five stocks, that puts us in such a good position yeah. uh, to be able to go for it. Now, I don't know if he can do that or not, but ideally, if he can just take more than three, <laughs> reveal leads on three. Yep. So it's going to be Greninja, who we have not seen so far. I'm guessing that was their fourth player. So we're going to see Greninja versus Samus which is not a great matchup. It's by no means unwinnable, but yeah. the reason that it doesn't do as well as you would like is because Samus tends to struggle against characters that have both range and speed, and Greninja is definitely that. Um, uh, now, the power level isn't quite there. Like, no. Greninja struggles getting kills, and because Samus is heavy, that, uh, that he does. That's that's where Greninja is going to have some trouble. But Seth's got the type advantage. He does. Still resists water, and water is weak to electricity. Well, but he also has a lot of fire attacks. All right. So, good use of Bomb there, forcing the Greninja to take a more defensive position, which Greninjas don't do well in. All right, gonna try to use Water Shuriken there to ledge guard. Oh, I know what he tried to do. Yeah, I saw that. Wait, oh, there he goes. Yeah, so Seth actually playing a little too cautiously, if that makes sense. Good job on it being able to get back, but he needs to start making some some hay here. Oh, and get screw attack out of shield and able to get back to a defensive position without being punished. Doesn't work for him that time, though. Shields through Water Shuriken. Ooh, oh, but falls smash. directly into Forward Smash. That's not what you want to see. Yeah, sadly, that's really all where Greninja's power is. Yeah, it doesn't have a ton of killing moves, but Forward Smash is definitely one of them. Greninja mostly relies on his ability to ledge guard and his juggling ability for a lot of those kills. As you're seeing right there, Seth drops the shield just a second too early. Oh, oh no, Pine no. Cones himself. And well, this is certainly not looking good. Seth went from handling this match pretty well to now being in big trouble. He can at least take a stop. Yeah, it looked like he was going to win this one easily, and now he just is worried about taking us, you know, doing any good, taking one stock at least. Greninja just has so much aerial.
I actually lost track of Greninja there for a second. I really did. <laughs> he blends in with the green background. He really does. And there that's it. Uh, up smash for the win. Let's see. Can Seth make an epic comeback here? It's not looking good for him right now, but if he can start, like, predicting this Greninja's attack patterns in the air, that's game over because that's really been the difference between him and Seth so far tonight. Mm. And, yep. Forward air. Uh, combo into forward air. That's going to be it. Man. Hate to see it. Captain only able to take one stock off. Not what you wanted to see. And honestly, it would have been better just from a pure matchup standpoint if we had stuck with the same yeah. and, and gone with Darien. Pitt's not like an amazing counter to Greninja, but he would have been a lot better matchup than Samus. As someone who plays Greninja from time to time, I don't like facing Pitt. Yeah. Um, most... To, to be honest, really anybody that relies on a significant amount of projectiles doesn't like facing pit. Like as a young link, I don't like I don't like facing pit either. Or people that like you know, just walk right through your arrows. Yeah, yeah, I don't like facing those guys either. But they're for completely different reasons. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah. In case you're wondering, the joke there is that he's a Kazuya main. So uh, sometimes I have a little trouble with him because he'll just tough guy through my projectiles. But anyway, so much fun. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so this next matchup, it looks like they are going to be sending in Darien. Uh, so they have not submitted bans or uh, picks for the stage, but it is going to be Darien versus Greninja. And man, it, you you know you. The thing is, in these matches, you never know what you don't know. Yeah. And if we had known that it was going to be Greninja. It would have been so nice to have thrown in Pitt to be able to face. Again, it's not like an amazing matchup, but it's not bad because it uh, pits a lot faster than Samus and does better in the air. And so it would have just been a better matchup overall. It would have been nice to see that, but unfortunate. But, you know, if Pitt can take out this Greninja pretty quickly, maybe keep all his stocks or maybe just lose one in the attempt. Because, you know, Seth did take a stock, so yeah. he only has to kill Greninja twice. It looks as though they have banned Battlefield, Smashville, and Pokemon Stadium 2. And I've given Darien a little bit of practice with Greninja. I mean, I'm not a really good Greninja player, but sometimes when we play, I'll play Greninja a good bit. Right. So if I were them, I would expect to see Darien play... Uh, probably. Okay, I know he's not going to do it, but I would pick Final Destination in this particular situation. Um, it leaves those wide open lanes, plenty of uh, room for him to reflect. Not a lot of under platform play that he could do. Like I know Pitt does really well yeah. with platforms, but that Greninja did really well with platforms, and so I would pick Final Destination. But that's me. They probably didn't ban Final Destination, counting on him not wanting Final Destination either. Uh, but I could be wrong. It looks like they're going to go Halabastion, which is a pretty good pick for, for him. Uh, it's one where there is a lot of platform, and unfortunately, Pitt's under-platform game isn't amazing. Uh, but at least it's somewhat predictable. It's a long, open stage. And Greninja's going to just kind of... Dead frog walking. Okay. That was... He got a little eager. I don't think he meant to, but he actually... The water shuriken caught at the end of his taunt. Which should not happen. Wow. One combo. That is the thing about Greninja. He can... Zero to death. There we go. Arrow water sure connection. Yep. 
By the way, Arrow does win that, depending on how charged it is. It beats the smaller one, but it loses to the bigger one. Yep. It also has way more range. Yes, and more control. Water Shuriken goes in one direction. Breaks Orbitar, but not fast enough for it to do any damage. Oh! Gotta be honest, did not see that forward air coming. That's a really good Greninja player. Yep. Yep. Uses down air there. One of Greninja's best moves. Although it loses to pit swords. Generally speaking, that is true, yes. Unless, you know, his swords just miss. You have to angle it right, though. Sadly, Pit is known for missing with his swords. Well, I mean, Pit's a character you have to have a good bit of precision to hit with. Oh, Ooh. nice forward air for the win. Heck of a exchange there with the uh, ledge guard. Greninja really would have gotten a kill there, but luckily Darian had the good sense to recover low. Oh, wow. And here he goes. Yep, gets caught in a grab. Luckily, Darian's able to jump out of it. Mm. But that's going to be game. So... That particular move is a modified version of Joker's, which just hits at a slight angle. And it's actually significantly better because that spin kick in the air, that up air, that hits. It, uh, it It's a, a perfect perpendicular to the ground, which means it launches directly up as opposed to Joker's, which is slightly yeah. at an angle. And if you're at any kind of damage, especially as a floaty player is as Pit, and you juggle them into that combo, that kills just about every time at that particular point on the stage. Like, Darien was already at high damage, but it would have killed even if we were at low damage because of how effective that combo is. But, man, you hate to see it. Faulkner now still in a bit of a pickle, down by four stocks, could really use some relief. This Greninja has just been eating our lunch, unfortunately. So, need to do something to get a quick kill against this Greninja. Uh, hopefully throw in somebody that could retain all their stocks, but even if they wind up doing that, then they get counterpicked. And so this is a, a tough spot to be in right now. Calzone looks like he's going to go in playing Snake. So that'll be fun to watch. And it doesn't look like they've issued bans yet. I would assume their bans would be the same. Although the only difference may be even though Greninja typically doesn't love Battlefield, Battlefield might be better because with Snake's ability to just drop projectiles and maneuver his missiles, Battlefield becomes a real problem for him because there's so many obstructions. Yep. So I could see them maybe changing and not banning Battlefield, but that would be the only change that I could think of that they may want to do here. Greninja should lose that matchup and lose it hopefully fairly quickly, but this is a really good Greninja player. He he combos really well. He has excellent aerials. Uh, granted, Snake should be able to beat him, but man, he's played really well tonight. And a really good Greninja player can do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time, so it would be nice if we can go ahead and get rid of him. But... Still have not answered. Um, oh, there it goes. So they have banned Smashville, Town and Country, and Battlefield. So they retained their ban on Battlefield. The only one they changed was they banned um, Town instead of Pokemon Stadium. So 
Pokemon Stadium, one of... Oh, and uh, he opts for Small Battlefield, which is one of Snake's better stages. I was going to say... I would Honestly, call... I understand Yeah. whenever they ban PS2 because Greninja's recover is very easy to pinecone with. That is true. I didn't think about that aspect of it, but that's a good point. So it looks like the match is starting right now. Having a little fun. Yep. All right. So the box comes off. And already Faulkner drawing first blood. Lots of explosions. Greninja doing a really good job of trying to keep Snake at arm's length, but Snake is able to just slowly, patiently start tacking on damage, and he's okay with playing the long game, especially considering Greninja only has one stock at this point. Yeah. You actually want to play a little more cautiously because you want to retain as many stocks as possible, and that explosion actually gets both of them. Wow, and very quickly, Snake goes from leading this game fairly comfortably to being stuck on platform and the victim of this Greninja's up air. There he goes. Trying to counter the grenade. I don't think I saw him counter once until this game. Uh, I actually did see him counter one time in the last match. Or at least I thought I did. Granted, with his movement, it's some sometimes difficult to spot when he does counter. Which is one of the reasons his counter is one of the better ones in the game. Yeah, Greninja trying to trap him in the same thing that he got him with last time. Yep, and does. That under-platform thing, this is why I really was kind of expecting him to go Final Destination or Pokemon Stadium because it has smaller platforms. Very persistent. Greninja did not die. Yeah. Like, it's impressive to have a Greninja at 172. That's true because the dude is, you know, he's not sturdy. That is not one of his Pokemon abilities. No, oh, he is a glass cannon. I wouldn't say that. Glass cannons are typically thought of as your power characters. He is fragile, but he's also not a power character. Wow. It, all three KOs, every single one was under platform up smash. Every one. Wait, was there one that was up air? Uh, I don't remember the first kill. Well, they were all under platform. Yeah. So uh, I got to tell you, if that's me and I just watched that, I'm going Final Destination next. I don't care what my main is. I'm going <laughs> yeah. Final Destination. Just completely take that weapon out of his arsenal. And man, with, with Rafe down, Faulkner is really not looking good here by a score of 310. Oof. That's a big, big hill to climb. Not impossible, but... We in a tight spot. Yep. And, and it looks like they're sending in Cam on DK. Uh, no surprise that Cam's next because he's the only one left. Big surprise that he's going with DK. Just because DK doesn't tend to be amazing against Greninja, but I think what Cam is thinking on, he's only got one stock left. I got to think about the next game, not yeah. this game. Which, you know, from his perspective... Not a bad move, especially considering he did very well as DK in the last one. But man, this Greninja player, I don't know if like maybe this is their best player and they were just going to use him as the anchor for the last one and decided to switch it up for this one. But uh, the Greninja player has definitely been much more of a problem for Faulkner than any player that we saw in the first round. 
So props to them. I mean, it's it's he's a really a good really player. good Greninja player can mm-hmm. be really scary. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and it's interesting because his play style has adjusted very well. Because you'll notice, like against Snake, he was playing the under platform game more mm-hmm. than anything else. And then you saw against Samus, it did a really good job at aerialing him to death. And against Pit, who tends to be much better with aerials, uh, Pit's you know good in the air but also floaty, and so he tried very hard to make sure he was always above him and juggling him a lot, and did a good job of ledge guarding. And so. Like, he's changed his play style based on all three of the characters he's played against, and that's impressive. Usually, definitely put in the hours. For sure. I mean, you have, to put, to, do that. You have to put in hours for Greninja. Yeah, well, you, there's no other way to do it because his frame data is his advantage, and so because of that, you have to be able to practice to where you can hit all those things so precisely. All right, so Greninja versus Diddy... Uh, Diddy. Donkey Kong. Wrong monkey. Yes, uh, the other monkey. The bigger monkey. Damn, trying to dig a hole to China. (laughs) All right, there they go. Wow. So far, it's been all Florida Atlantic. DK is juggle food. He is. Not jungle, juggle. Two different things. And that up smash that was the bane of Calzone's existence a second ago comes out again, and And he gets him in exactly the same way. By the way, I'm actually very surprised. I didn't know that Greninja's up smash hit through that platform because it's so much higher. Greninja's up smash is, has a lot of range. Which you wouldn't think because he's such a little guy. All right, well, he passes the tech check. I hate it when Cam tech checks. I hate it because I'm bad at teching. Same. <laughs> oh. Oh, Whirling Kong. Had good launch, but just wasn't. There it there is. There we go. I was about to say, just wasn't it quite enough damage, but the second time, he was. So, Big Daddy DK takes the Greninja out finally. If at first you don't concede, try, try again. That's right. My whirling monkey didn't work. I'll whirl again. They never expected a second time. No. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. (laughs) Nobody expects the second whirling Kong. But, anyway. But, you know, props... Really, really, wait. Wyatt on Wendy? Huh? Who's Wendy? I have, I've played Smash for a while now. Did they introduce a new character? I don't remember them adding Wendy. We got Wendy from like, uh, uh, the fast food chain? <laughs> I mean, my mind went like Peter Pan. Oh, see, yeah. <laughs> see, I'm hungry. So I was thinking of the, uh, are we going to send out a flurry? Yeah. Uh, they, Wendy and Smash Bros, they throw a frosty at him. Uh, Wendy is Bowser Jr. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate them clarifying that because I was completely, I was like, who's Wendy? I forgot that the girl Bowser Jr. is named Wendy. Okay, they knew, but... Us commentators didn't know. <laughs> yes. Maybe they're watching our stream and we're like, these guys have no idea who Wendy is. <laughs> they are watching. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it. 
That's funny. So they're watching our stream. That's good to know. <laughs> well, well we whatever. A bunch of idiots. Yeah. It's late, guys. It really is. Uh, and it looks like they've chosen Battlefield. So uh, we'll be seeing them here in just a second. We're going to, after this, you and I are going to, like, memorize the names of all the Koopalings. Yeah. <laughs> I know there's Roy. Yeah, see, I, I only know the one that I play, which is Morton. So. I know. Well, and I know Iggy, too. Yeah. Everyone knows Iggy. Brandon then, plays Roy. Let's see, there's Ludwig. Yeah, I'm out. That's the only ones I remember. Yep. Me and Dish had a Roy versus Roy. I played actual Roy, he played Bowser Jr. Roy. Oh, nice. So a lot of uh, trying to fill one another out, uh, a lot of neutral airing, a lot of just playing very safe on both sides. But I will say, I do like this uh, Bowser Jr.'s use of the down B using the mech. It's making those platforms significantly more dangerous. Oh, and the uh, DK headbutt. Oh man, missed DK punch, missed opportunity there. Almost just completely Ooh. destroyed shield. Yep. Oh, and he actually gets behind him on the recovery. He doesn't go for ledge at all, it just surpasses it. Come on, DK. <laughs> Why did he just taunt there? <laughs> it's Cam. He was confused about why he kept using forward smash, I guess. I don't know. Those drills do look cool, though. Uh oh! <laughs> and gets the stage spike. Nice. That a boy, Cam. <laughs> oh, but immediately gets caught by the side B. Oh, man. Cam said, my turn. Yeah, well, that uh, that up air combo hammer. Oh, and it was lucky that that forward smash sour spotted because that would have been a disaster if it had actually hit. Oh, and catches him with the DK slap. Uh-oh. Could be in trouble here. Nope. Able to get back from an underneath stage. That looked like a John move to you, didn't it? It did. That totally reminded me of John doing that all the time. And he can do it with so many characters. He can. Oh, tried to go for a spike there, but unfortunately mistimed it a little bit. <laughs> now they're just having fun at this point. Oh, gets caught in a forward smash. And the explosive gets caught on cam. Oh, gets caught with the forward smash, and that's going to be game. Faulkner, unfortunately, not able to go any further than that. Becomes a 1-8, uh, loses the final stock there. And uh, by the way, uh, just, you know, in that matchup, uh, when your opponent's able to move like that and able to get those aerial combos, like anybody that can juggle really proficiently, just a bad matchup for DK. Yeah. Not much you can do with it. Uh, and I mean, that makes sense. They counterpicked DK specifically for that. And so, uh, Cam with one stock down and having the Bowser Jr. against him, just tough to win that one.
But that's going to be it for us this evening. So, unfortunately, Faulkner not able to win that one. Goes down against Florida Atlantic by a score of 2-0. Uh, but thanks for Florida Atlantic for watching our stream. Yeah. That was fun uh, interacting with them. They, uh, they actually... <laughs> Seth said on there is like it was fun listening to them try and figure it out. So <laughs> Seth, which um you know doing his job over there and not getting um uh not actually talking to us during the stream, which he's not supposed to. So I appreciate that. But yeah, we were just completely baffled over here over that. But yeah, so that's going to be our final score for this evening: Florida Atlantic two, Faulkner zero, and we're going to go ahead and call it a night here. So we will go to a quick break and then we'll be back with the post game show. So be sure to stay tuned to that. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? We live in the information age where you either use a computer or you get left behind. Are you ready for your future? Faulkner's computer science program is your gateway to a leading edge career with purpose. I will church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. At Faulkner, there are many kind and knowledgeable people that are eager to help you prepare for the future. In the U.S., there are predicted to be over 400,000 job openings each year for computer specialists with median wages well above average. What you learn at Faulkner will give you control of what your future looks like. Our faculty has an average of 16 years of industrial experience and is ready to navigate you to a bright future as a computer scientist. Come join us at Faulkner University. Your future is worth it. Tomorrow's teachers, ministers, and scientists guiding future business leaders to positively impact our global economy, teaching healthcare professionals to improve patient outcomes, coaching athletes to give their best on and off the field, men and women learning how to succeed wherever their dreams take them. That's Faulkner University. With over 70 undergraduate and graduate degree programs, you'll find your calling all in a Christian learning environment. Faulkner University. Discover more at faulkner.edu everybody thank you so much for being with us here on the post game show we are here with darian rogan d-man uh playing pit this evening and so we wanted to get a little insight into what was going on in the match from his perspective so darian tell us uh in that first matchup we had uh, a bit of a struggle but we wound up with uh pit you know especially um it just seemed like it worked better in the first matchup. Um, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I just tried to hang in there and stick with what was reliable and what was working, and it got me a stop. So, Yeah, just tried to play it safe, essentially? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that does generally, uh, you know, sending you in as the uh, the first man in the – that was right. In the first round, you were in first, and yes. then they switched to second man in the second one. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like you were able to, um, uh, you know, had a favorable matchup in the second one against Greninja, but that Greninja actually had really good aerials, which normally yeah. Pit dominates in that realm. So uh, talk to us a little bit about that and what you were doing to try to try to counter that. I was, I was like, just up against everything. Like, he had comboed me at the start, and mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm just going to hang in there and try to get a stock, and it came to me, so. Yes. Well, um, with the uh, one thing that we noticed that uh, you had to not rely too heavily on is we noticed you were using your Orbitars a lot more earlier, and then you kind of backed off on that and tried to do a lot more approach game uh, in that match. So what was the reasoning for that? Is that you were just trying to fight fire with fire and do hyper aggro or what? Yeah, because it wasn't really working in like uh, with Byleth's like range, and mm -hmm. I had some issues with that at the start, so... I just wanted to change it up a bit. So, Yeah, Byleth is a challenge. Uh, it has the command grab, which can reach in the air, so it kind of negates the uh, the effectiveness of the Orbitars. 
Um, it also, because Byleth is so heavy and, and Pit already kind of struggles in getting kills against bigger characters, that seemed to be a problem. So what was your strategy against the Byleth there? Was it just to like just cake on as much damage as possible or what were you going for? Kind of a mixture of both. Like I, I wanted to have a more defensive approach while not being too aggressive. So that was my main strategy against that pilot. So. Well, now there were a couple of things that we noticed that you did really well tonight. We saw an increased use of the neutral air and the back air, and the back air especially to great effect. So yeah. uh, is that something you've been working on recently? That is something I've been working on. Yeah, well, Pitt's back air is nasty. It is. Now, granted, most characters' back air is pretty good, but Pitt's is in particular, especially in an aerial fight, like Pitt's back air can really do damage and launch somebody pretty far. I don't know the frame data like right off the bat, but I know it's very low. So. It is very low. In fact, as a commentator, that's actually one of the things that's a little bit difficult about Pitt's back air is because the frame data is so low, you actually sometimes miss it. <laughs> like, yeah. you'll, you'll actually like see somebody get launched like, oh, that was back air. <laughs> it takes you a second to be like, what just happened? Yeah. But yeah, so thank you so much, Darian, for being here tonight. I know it's been a, a long one for you guys and a long one for us, too, because we're, we're used to playing a little earlier. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, that's going to be it for us this evening. Uh, that's all we've got for you tonight. So I know you're weeping, you're upset, but don't worry. We do have more esports coming your way. That's going to be tomorrow, and we want to let you know about that. Our next game is going to be Counter-Strike. Uh, two, and that's going to be at 8 p.m., not at our regular time. It's going to be a little bit later because this is a rescheduled game. Uh, what happened is we actually had this game scheduled originally in spring break, but obviously we're not going to be here, so we kind of had to reschedule it. So we're going to be playing against Hartwick College, so it's going to be Hawks versus Eagles tomorrow night, and that's going to be at 8 p.m. Counter-Strike 2. Be sure to check that out. We'll be here with you, giving you that coverage. And then we also have Smash Bros. Blue, uh, the next game, and the final game for you guys is going to be 6 p.m. Uh, now, we may wind up rescheduling that because we try to move the Smash Bros. games, and, you know, it could happen to where tonight, like, white can't reschedule, but blue can, so we wind up moving blue backwards. But normally, blue plays first, and we try to reschedule white to where they play a little bit later. But that's where we are right now, and you guys will be playing the Malone Pioneers. Okay. Uh, next week. So if you guys can eke out a win, it's unlikely, but mathematically there is a slim chance that if we are able to win next week, we will get a playoff spot. So uh, be sure to check that out and to make sure to watch all of our coverage of Faulkner Esports, of course, so the Faulkner Sports Network will be here. And you can check out all of our social media platforms, whether you're looking at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, you can check out all of those for updates on our scheduling and all of that good stuff as well. Special thanks to Liz Anderson for pulling double duty tonight and doing not one but two games. Uh, so <laughs> I know that she's tired, but she did a great job of making sure that the games look good and crisp. And, uh, of course, bringing this all to you, we appreciate her and all of our hardworking production staff. Uh, special thanks to my partner in crime, Titus King, doing a great job on col color commentary tonight and making sure that the games uh, ran smoothly. Of course, I'm your head coach, Caleb Colquitt, saying so long from Red Guitar USA High Res Arena. One last time, Faulkner unfortunately does fall to the Florida Atlantic Owls by a score of 2 nothing. So we will be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for that Counter-Strike game against Hartwick. Until then, stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching and soar Eagles.